Okay, so when you guys are going to be assigned to read this book right here, Things Not Seen. And basically, this book is a, uh, about a, uh, a guy, a kid that's invisible. So to start off, I'm going to do a discussion. So have any of you guys ever felt invisible? And doesn't mean like, oh, like you're actually invisible, like invisible on like any social interaction like maybe if you're you see some group of kids some new ones or the ones that you know in school or whatever and they ask and they're talking and you feel like they're kind of leaving you out so you kind of feel like you're invisible to them this could be like in any situation this is just a situation i made up but have you guys ever felt that way yes no maybe yeah or if you want to share like a story you can do how about anyone else? All oh, your parents ignoring you. I'm sorry, Omar. Well, hopefully, you know, you can discuss with them and tell them like, hey, I kind of want to have my opinions like understood or heard, but I hope they don't want to keep ignoring you. And then how about if you if we're invisible, how would you feel? So this is like if you're actually invisible, like the kid in the book who's actually invisible, how would you feel? And you could be excited, anxious, scared, nervous. I feel like I would be probably a bit scared because I'd be like, what's going on? And then it'd be interesting. Omar said happy, okay. Yeah, that'd be... That'd be kind of cool. It's kind of like your own like superpower, but I don't know if you know how to like turn it off or on. <laughs> I'd be scared. I would not like that. I feel that too. I don't know. Well, at first I'd be really scared, and then I'd be like, "Well, what do I do now?" And then try to figure out what what to do. But anyways, I'm gonna be reading chapter one to you guys, and then let me screen share. Hi, Kamaya. Um, so I'm gonna be reading chapter one of this book to you guys, and then, oh, you guys are already on it. Look at you, three of you on it. Okay. So we're gonna do like a word find. So if you guys hear a word that you don't know, you guys can either like stop me or tell me um, that you don't know. So we're gonna add it to our list of words. And make this little document so we can add it to our list because you guys are going to be assigned this so it's this one's really easy all you have to do is from the list of words which we're going to do you're going to pick three of the words that you don't know and then you're going to put the word here the definition here and then a picture here of the word and that's about it and then i put the resource here too so dictionary.com is where you can find the definition or you could just google it whichever one is easier for you but and then i also have a kahoot for you guys so that's going to be at the end this one's really fun i made it kind of funny so hopefully you you guys will like it um so okay i'm gonna read chapter one things not seen so chapter one about me it's a Tuesday morning in February, and I get up as usual, and I stumble into the bathroom to take a shower in the dark, which is my school day method because it's sort of like an extra 10 minutes of sleep. It's after the shower, that's when it happens. It's when I turn on the bathroom light and wipe the fog off the mirror to comb my hair. It's what I see in the mirror, it's what I don't see. I look a second time and then rub at the mirror again. I'm not there, that's what I'm saying. I'm not there. I feel kind of dizzy, so I make my way back to bed because if I'm dreaming, bed is the place, right? Am I awake? Am I? And I wait to wake up, but I don't because I already am. I feel my heart pounding in my chest. My breath comes fast, and my mouth is dry. I lift my head off the pillow and see my shape on the bed. It's right there under the covers. Then I pull off the electric blanket and the sheet. Nothing. So I go back to the bathroom to the big mirror, and I'm still not there. The mirror is the mirror and it is on the wall and I'm not there in front of it. 
I think I am. I mean, I see the mirror. I see my towel wave through the air. I see the shower curtain jump when I punch at it, but I don't see me. So I panic and I wrap the towel around my waist and I go to tell my mom and dad, which is not like me. I don't tell them much. I mean, they're okay in small doses and they can be useful. Them knowing what I'm up to usually makes them less useful. But they are smart. I give them that much. This looks like a problem where smarts might count. So I'm headed for the kitchen. I know they'll both be there because this is a work day, a school day, and on such a day in the Phillips house, eggs and toast hit the heat at 7.15 always. I go down the hallway to the stairs and I stop. I'm scared of the stairs. Normally I have good eye hand-eye coordination. Does Do people know what coordination means? Does anyone know what coordination means? If we don't, we can add it to our list. Coordination. Oh, I forgot the extra O. Okay. Coordination is added to the list. Oh, let me go back to you guys. Okay. Aim. Yeah, like if, when you say like good hand eye coordination, that means like you have good like reflexes. Am I doing the novel? Yes, I am, Olivia. I'm reading it to you guys. I'm reading chapter one. You guys got to pay attention because I have this kahoot and you guys are going to have to figure it out. Okay, where was I? Let me find my spot. There you go. Okay, yeah. I don't dork out, don't drop my tray in the cafeteria, trip on the stairs, nothing like that. But there's a problem this morning. No hands, no arms, no legs, no feet. I feel them, but I can't see them. I hang onto the banister and feel my way down like a three-year-old. Do, does anybody know what banister means? Okay, we can put that on our list. What is the word? Banister. Oh, I know what that one means. I'm pretty sure. So banister, I'm pretty sure. Just like a banner, a sign. So banister is like something on this. Well, let's look it up together. So it's like a handrail, yeah. So like, which is a fancy way to say handrail. So that's usually like, you know, when you're going down the stairs, you're grabbing onto the handrail or banister. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's one of the words I put on there for you guys. Then I'm in the kitchen doorway, my feet cold on the tile floor. Dad scrambles the eggs, mom reads the paper. And I say, guys, I can't see myself. They glance at the door to the dining room and dad says, well, come on in here and let's see what's the matter. And I say, but that's what's the matter. I am in here. I can't see myself. You can't see me. I can't be seen like I'm invisible. Mom looks at dad and then she smiles that kids kind of smile that I hate then looks back to her paper. She turns on her voice of authority. Stop messing around now, Bobby. You've only got 20 minutes before your bus. Disconnect the microphone or the walkie talkie or whatever it is you're playing with. Come hang up this wet towel and then get in here and eat now. Meet Professor Mom, also known as the director. Her motto is, okay, do, does anybody know what motto means? Isn't it like the phrase that you always say? Yeah, like a phrase you always say. So, uh, Omar, is that what you said too? Yeah. Okay, I'll just keep it, I'll put it on here too, just to have it, just in case. Um, okay, now where was I? Okay, when in doubt, give an order. She used to the timid little freshman in her literature classes at the University of Chicago. She expects young people to jump when she barks at them. I've been accused. Do we know what accused means? Framed, like something like that. Yep, okay. That's a good one to add to our list. You guys know it, but I'm still writing it for you. Okay. Where are we? I've been accused. I'm messing around, goofing off again. So I pull out my chair, sit on it, grab my orange juice, lug it down, and thump the glass onto the placemat. And now I've got their attention completely. Dad stops stirring eggs and stares at my empty glass. Mom leans so far forward that she spills her own juice and drips into her lap. She doesn't notice. 
Dad says, this is a trick, right? Do something else. So I pick up my spoon, lick it, and hang it on my nose. A pretty good trick, even when your nose looks like it's there. The spoon hangs in midair. Bobby, mom's voice is squeaky. Bobby, stop this. Another order. I'm not doing anything, mom. It's just happening. The spoon drops and jangles on the floor. It's a ceramic floor in an old Victorian kitchen in Chicago. Chicago, I'm just saying Chicago because it's part of the coup. In February, I'm sitting on an oak chair wearing a damp towel. I'm freezing. Dad turns off the heat under the eggs. Have you ever had the science of exactly what happens during the process of making scrambled eggs explained to you in great detail? I have about 10 times. Dad stands there with the wooden spoon in one hand, frying pan in the other. The look on his face says perplexed physicist, physicist at work. Okay, do we know what perplexed means? Okay, we're going to add that to the list. Unless you have a guess at what it means. That's okay. Um, yeah. I'm expecting a theory any second and dad delivers. He says, since we can't all be dreaming this, we must be looking at some kind of visible light anomaly. How about anomaly? Okay, I'm going to add it to this. Anomaly. I've read the research on this kind of thing. I mean, the research on the mathematical theories, but this... This is a phenomenon, an event. I'm going to put phenomenon on there as well. I think I spelled that completely wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, where are we? Okay. Such a useful observation. The guy can't help being Joe Physics, is what he does. He works at Fermi Lab. Fermi Lab. <laughs> I'm just going to say it again because it's on the Kahoot. That's one of those places where they smash atoms and then take pictures of the bits. Life is one big science experiment for dad. Dad's been waving the spoon around as he talks. Egg boogers are all over the place. Mom tries to talk again, but all we get is more squeaks. I'm starting to wonder when the smarts are going to kick in. Dad gets it back under control almost right away. He mops up mom's juice, serves up three plates, and sits down. Dad and I start to eat, but instantly he stops chewing. Dad watches as I float forkloads of rubbery eggs up to my mouth. So does mom. And I'm watching too. It's a good show. Bobby and his disappearing breakfast now appearing on the big screen of life in the kitchen of the weird. Mom's hand starts, sh mom's hand starts reaching for where she figures my arm will be. She's off by about a foot, so I lean forward to help out. When her hand hits flesh, she freaks like she's grabbed a lizard or something. Oh, God, oh, God, it's Bobby. It's him. He's there. He's he's not. Oh, God, David, do something. Let's let's call Dr. Weston or something, someone else, a, a specialist. So I'm thinking, oh, great. Yeah, let's call one of those invisible teenager specialists. I'll get the yellow pages. But I don't say that. I say, Mom, come on, pull it together. I'm not sick or anything. I'm okay. See, I'm eating a healthy breakfast to help build strong bodies 12 ways. Really, Mom, I'm okay. And I reach over and pat her hand. She jumps again, but then she grabs hold of my hand with both of hers. She squeezes so hard I can feel my bones turning to tuna salad. She's kind of rocking back and forth in her chair, trying to get her breathing to slow down. She doesn't know where to look. Her eyes are all over, all over where I'm sitting, but then she focuses on captive hand that blank space between her two hands that feel like her only child her little baby bobby her life's biggest disappointment is dad again he's clearing his throat that means he knows something we don't and he wants to be sure we're listening carefully emily now think we can't tell a soul about this not one person not your parents not dr weston not margie or louie not anyone imagine what would happen if this if the news of this, whatever this is, is got out, if this got out into the public. We'd have every reporter, every camera in the world on our front steps in half an hour and the government. I know the government. They, they would be here 10 minutes after the story broke to take Bobby somewhere safe. Safe. You think the CIA and the Joint Chiefs would be interested in this? I can tell you without a doubt they would, so we tell no one. He stops to let that sink in. When there's a family crisis, okay, I'm gonna put crisis on there as well. 
Okay, where are we? Okay, when there's a family crisis or something bad happens, usually you get you get to call for outside help. When Bobby gets caught shoplifting, you call your lawyer. When mom drops her ring down the drain, you call a plumber. Dad spills the charcoal grill on the deck, you call the fire department. But if your kid dissolves in the shower one morning, what do you? who do you call? No one. Dad's got it, right? This has to stay in the house. Then dad crams some phony cheer into his voice and says, hey, who knows? Everything could be back to normal in half an hour, but no matter what, we tell no one. Okay. No matter what, we tell no one. Agreed? Mom slowly nods her head, yes, and so do I. Dad looks in my direction and says, and you agree to, Bobby? Then I realize that Dad can't see me nodding, so I say, absolutely, my invisible lips are sealed. Then I say, but Mom's got a good point. Even if we can't tell anyone, don't we have to do something? Dad again, do? Well, first we have to think. Things that, things that are impossible never happen, and everything that happens has a law behind it. I mean, there's only cause and effect, right? We're looking at an effect, so there must be a cause. We find the cause, we reverse it, and that eliminates the effect. Joe physics again. It's the look on mom's face that makes me talk back to dad because she isn't buying his little science speech either. So I say, yeah, that sounds great, dad, but that still doesn't answer the question, which is what do I do like right now, like all day today and tomorrow and maybe next week? This isn't some physics lab, dad. This is me. Why don't you just admit that the truth that the truth is you have no idea what I should do. That brings, that brings mom back to life. Now listen here, young man. It never fails whenever I screw up or mouth off, I miraculously become a young man. Mom keeps talking. Your father and I have always been good parents and we're not going to stop just because of some, some special problem. So just mind your manners and keep a civil tongue in your head. We'll do everything we can, you know that. Dad is nodding along and he says, of course we will, Bobby. Now just everyone calm down. What we need to do most of all is think carefully. There's no such thing as a problem that can't be solved or a process that can't be explained. It just takes clear thinking. And by that, of course, dad means his thinking. They're both talking loud. And yesterday I would have just shut up or said, I'm sorry or something. But it's amazing how brave you feel when the people who have run your life for 15 years suddenly can't see the disgusted look on your face. I stand up so fast, my chair tips over backward with a big bang. I yank the towel from around my waist and throw it onto the table. Well, how about this? I'm shouting. How about if I just disappear for a while? You two go ahead and do all the clear thinking you want. I'll just drop out of sight, you know, lay low a little, then I'll let you know what I've been thinking. I take three silent steps backwards and stand near the door by the telephone. Five, six, seven, ten seconds. Bobby, mom, is on her feet looking at where I used to be, but then she can sense I'm not there. Bobby! You stop at this instant. Now she's panicked. She's figured out that I could be out the door and on a bus by now. She's looking every which way, wringing her hands and biting her lower lip and then yelling, Bobby, Bobby. And dad, dad is sitting, palms flat on the table, staring at the floor, shaking his head. It's the logic again. Dad sees right away that I have all the power, so he's not wasting energy. But then comes the tears. Mom slumps down in her chair and starts crying. And I can't and I can't take that. I can never take that. I have to fold. So I say real quiet, like, all right, all right, I'm right here. But remember, I'm the one with the problem here, not you. Because that's what they do, both of them. Like if I get in trouble at school, suddenly they're the ones on trial. They have to figure out what they have to do. It's always about them. Mom's mad but mostly relieved. Robert, that was just mean. It's not fair to hide that way. Promise me, promise me, Robert, that you will never do that again. And now I'm not the young man. Now I'm Robert, and I'm doing this to her. But I promise with my invisible fingers crossed, of course. Then I say, but guys, do you get what I mean? I mean, like, this isn't just some phenomenon. And it's not like I've got the chicken pox or flu or something. This is completely different, and it's happening to me. And it means that I, can do, I can't do anything like I did yesterday. So that's why I'm saying, what do I do? And now I've got myself scared, too, because it's true, horribly true. Here I am standing here with my feet cramping up on the cold, cold floor, imagining the rest of my life as the ultimate weirdo. I can't go anywhere. Clothes are supposed to have a body inside them and mine is missing. I could go out naked, but that's not something sane people do anytime in Chicago, especially not in February. School, gone, off the air, not that I care much. It's the U of C lab school. 
It's where the professors and the local geniuses all and all the rest of the university creeps send their kids. It's supposed to be so great, better than Francis Parkman, better than North Shore Country Day, blah, blah, blah. Most of the time, I can barely tolerate it, except for the libraries and jazz band. I mean, it's not like I'm some psycho loan or anything. I've got friends, kids I eat lunch with, stuff like that. But I'm not But I'm not a private school kid. I got there because my family moved here six years ago. Plus, my mom teaches at the university, so the tuition is cheap. Maybe my school is a great place if you're a show-off genius or a soccer god or something. But if you're me, it's just school. But that's over, at least for well, at least for today. I stand there in the kitchen, naked and shivering, and look at mom and dad still sitting at the table. They're stumped. I've never seen them this way, and that might be the scariest thing of all. With parents like mine, you get used to having them tell you what to do next. But I can see that they have, they don't have a clue, not about this. And suddenly I think, what did I ever believe they had all the answers for me anyway? I mean, do, I mean, they do know a lot of semi-interesting stuff. Mom knows politics and history and English literature inside out. And dad's a certified brainiac, so he knows tons. And that's fine for them. But all that, that's got nothing to do with me, not right now. So I look at them sitting there and I say, I'll be in my, up in my room. I've got to figure, what out, figure out what to do. And it's true. I've got to figure it out because of this is what's happening right now. This is about me. And that was chapter one. And, okay. So I wrote down some words and that was a long chapter one yeah <laughs> and i was reading it also i was like i'm kind of like tired <laughs> but um so this is some of the questions or not the questions sorry the words that i picked out from chapter one and then so you're going to go on to this where it says vocabulary chapter one and it's in your it's right here vocabulary chapter one and you're going to click on that and then all you have to do is use this list that I just made, and you're going to find the word, the definition, and like picture to go around with it. So the resource is right here, or you can just Google the word, whatever one's easier, easier for you guys. So here's that. And now, anyone have any questions, though? No. What if their water was contaminated? That's a good, that's a good thought, Omar. What if it was? But if it was contaminated, don't you think like the parents would be invisible too? Yeah, you guys should think about how did he become invisible? Like, why is it only him? Why is it not his parents? We'll probably figure it out later on, but you should think about it. And then we got a kahoot. So, this classic. Okay. So, get ready because we're about to do Kahoot. So, there's your game plan. Everyone knows how to get there, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Robert. So, we're going to do this before we do the word find? Yeah, you're just going to do the Kahoot. And then the word find is just for you guys to do later or free time or whatever. It's not really going to be graded, but I'm checking for completion. Mr. Noob, okay. <laughs> um, wait for everyone. Okay, David's here. How many people are here? There's 18 minus 2, 16. Okay. I'm me. Through funny things. No way. Everyone's there a ghost. Through the crack in the would be me. Mine is still loading, so you might have to wait a little longer. I just need about like 16 people. I'm at eight right now. Where is everyone else? 
Okay, I'll leave here. I'll leave. I'll leave six more people. Mine doesn't let me go in. It won't let you go in. What if I send the thing in the chat? Try that. But if it doesn't work, that's okay. We'll just keep moving. Okay, I have 11. I need a few more. Some of you guys didn't put your real names on. <laughs> Plus is still trying to get in. Kamaya, did you get in? Not yet. Okay. Aaron, you're trying to get in, right? Yeah. Is, did that link work? Anyone else that's trying to get in, try that link I sent in the chat. Hopefully that might work. Does it let me? Okay. Mm, I don't know what else to do. Let me see if I can. See. Wait. Is there anyone else? There is no space in the numbers. Yep. Omar is right. Anybody else having trouble getting in? I'm waiting for Aaron. Was it what is it showing you, Aaron? Let me check your screen. Okay, this is a lot of stuff. How do I go there again? Oh, right here. The pasture. Aaron. The Kahoot is private. Wait, go back to your screen. Are you the owner of the Kahoot? Log into play. Oh. Um, okay, wait. So I'm gonna show you how to get there. Just type in Kahoot game pen. This is the quickest way to get. And then you go here. So I'll send this. This might work then. Try that and then you gotta enter these numbers. Hopefully that'll paste. Oh, yep. So try that link and then enter those numbers and then I think you should be good. There you go. Oh no, put the game pin in, Aaron. You gotta put the numbers I sent in the chat. Right there, the three, two, eight, one, zero, zero. 
and then it'll put okay so Aaron put your put your put these numbers do you see where I'm at come back over to this screen you see these numbers you're gonna put that in and then it'll take you to put your name in wait just the numbers yep just the numbers right now and then it'll take you to a screen and it'll it'll go to the next screen and then you put your name what was it it was three two eight i'll just tell you three two eight one zero zero wait you say three two eight one zero zero one zero zero yep and then press enter and then it should take you to yep and then now you put your name There you are, you're in. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we gotta do this kind of fast because it's a little late, but it's okay. So let's start. Are you guys ready? All right, first question. The setting of the book is in, I remember I emphasized this. So we got De Detroit. Oh, was, I remember this. Uh, I don't know, or Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Hey, Miss Harris. Hi, Aaliyah. Okay. So six of oh, I just guessed. I didn't know. I just guessed that one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either. I it just like one time, so that's okay. Okay, whoever's the main character story is Stop doing all that, girl. Bobby, Stop. Andrew, Mr. Phillips. Oh. Hey, no. I said we're the same so who is it gonna be? <laughs> I said this name like a lot, so if you get this wrong, then you really weren't paying attention. <laughs> Okay, bye. What, what's happening here? <laughs> oh my god! I picked the wrong one. It was bright. It was yellow, right? But uh, but under Bobby. You're okay. You're okay. Mr. <laughs> oh, Kamaya, they're coming up. All right, who's next? Which point of view is used for the story? And you can look at the first paragraph of the chapter if you're confused. So first person, I. So let me just read. It's Tuesday morning and I get up as usual. Or is it, is this Krusty Krab? No, this is Patrick. This should be pretty easy. I'm giving you guys the answer. Don't listen to Omar. He's trying to give you guys the wrong answers. <laughs> or ACL. 100% you're stopped. Who's agree? Yes, you guys are trying. I said don't trust him. I don't know this book. What is it? I'm a Aubrey, get to that. What is Bobby's main conflict? Now, this should just, you guys should know. His life is cool. His turn to visible. For an unexplained reason, if you watch too much anime, I don't think that one's it because that is missing. What? <laughs> so he's late for school, he has turned invisible for an unexplained reason, or he watched too much anime, or his dad's missing. Now, this is the basis of the whole book, so let's get this right, guys. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, blue makes sense. No, you never, never. <laughs> 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 Who put those for story? Oh my gosh. Too much anime. Okay. If you guys hear a baby in the background talking, that's my little cousin. And my little cousin. Everybody's little cousin. Okay, this one, I feel my heart pounding in my chest. How would you describe Bobby? <laughs> so would you find him indifferent, or easygoing? What place are you in? He seemed like he was panicking because how his heart was, um. So click it. I think it's Omar. 
I could agree more, Omar. Nine. Keep panic. What's happening with the rest of you? How old is your baby cousin? Looks like it's Kamaya. She will be. Oh, Kamaya's catching up. Which of the following is not true about Bobby's mom? She teaches classes at the university. She works at Fermilab. She thinks Bobby is goofing around at first. Or question mark. <laughs> and we're looking at not. That's the key word, not. Okay, so we got three people right on this one. This was also kind of like a random one that came and then went. So you, this one's a little hard, but that's okay. Oh, got some people coming up. Okay, which of the following is not true about Bobby's dad? So he freaks out when he realizes Bobby is invisible. Life is one big science experiment for him. He works at Fermi Lab. He insists they tell no one what happened to Bobby. So what's not true about him? That's kind of hard too. Okay. Uh, well, this is true about it. He does work at Fermilab. Remember keyword not. Okay. Why does Mr. Phillips want to see Bobby's condition or keep Bobby's condition a secret? He thinks no one else will have a solution. He thinks he's smarter than everyone else. He thinks the government will take Bobby away for experience or I am a head out. <laughs> And this should not be <laughs> clicked. I think it's green. <laughs> I, I haven't even looked at the chat. Everyone, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Those three people, I already know who's putting these. <laughs> I can tell who put those. Okay. Last question. Which of the following quotes tell you, tells you that Bobby doesn't seem hey, to be with his parents? So I wrap the towel around my waist and I go to tell my mom and dad. Mom's hand starts reaching for where she figures my arm will be. Her only child, her little baby Bobby, her life's big disappointment. Her dad stops stirring eggs and stares at my empty glass. So we're looking at doesn't seem to get along with his parents. So which one of these seems like he doesn't get along with his parents? What happened? Well, this is her being caring, the, the yellow one. But yeah, it's this one. Okay, let's see who got. Okay, ghost. Whoever this is, good job. <laughs> Whoever this is, good job as well. I think it was Aubrey. Yep, Aubrey. Good job, Aubrey. Yeah. I'm second. Who's, who's, who said they're second? Omar. Oh, okay. Good job, Omar. <laughs> and then who's Ghost? Because good job as well. Ghost it was me. Ghost. It was who? Aaliyah? Oh, Asiel. Oh, good job, Asiel. I said Asiel. Okay. <laughs> All right. And that's it. Oh, Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Oh, yep. Daniel, you have your hand raised. Is the novel posted I'm like on accident sometimes? Oh, well, um, I'm gonna tell Miss uh, Miss Yanis to post it for you guys because she says she has a a um, copy of it that she can post. So I'll tell her to post that. But all you guys need to do this is posted already. Things not seen. The word find that we did, and then. All you guys have to do is just do this. That's all I have assigned. Just three words, the word definition and a picture. 
and that's it. It's not going to be graded, but I will be checking for completion. So yeah, I'll tell Miss Yanis that you guys will need the copy, and then you guys can probably follow on tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm reading chapters two and three. They're going to be extra long. <laughs> but yeah, did you guys enjoy? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I try to make it kind of funny so you guys would like it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to stop recording.